Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about bearing size terminology. I speak to enough people on the phone here that are confused with what bearings to order that I figured we'd have the conversation and get back to the basics. The reason why there are different bearing sizes for the same engine is so you can get the desired bearing clearance regardless of the conditions. Some conditions that may lead to the requirement of a non-standard bearing size are you've damaged the engine, it's, you know, it's spun a bearing and they have to remove material from the crankshaft to get back to a usable surface on the crank to put the crank back in the engine and use it. When material is removed off the crankshaft, you need a thicker bearing to make up the difference. Most people refer to this as an oversized bearing because now their crank is undersized. Another scenario that would leave you needing a different size bearing is if you had a block that was on the low side of the factory spec and a crankshaft that was on the high side of factory spec. This would put you in a situation where you had a smaller than ideal or less than ideal bearing clearance and you had to adjust that through changing the bearing size. The oil clearance is the distance or area between the bearing and the crankshaft. And what happens is oil is pressurized through the crankshaft and it basically makes what's called a hydrodynamic wedge. And it's a wave of oil that the components are riding on to keep them from touching down. If you have a stock engine and you're using it in stock power level and stock form, the bearing clearance can be very tight because the parts aren't under much deflection and stress. As you increase deflection and stress, the parts start to change shape to some degree and you can get with a tight bearing clearance, the parts touching down and then the engine destroys itself. So it's typical in a racing engine that you would run a larger than stock oil clearance to give you some cushion for the additional horsepower and the additional stress the parts are under. The long accepted standard for generations now has been a thou of bearing clearance per inch of journal size. So if you had a three inch journal crankshaft, you would have three thou of bearing clearance and that would keep you out of trouble for the most part. You may adjust up from there depending on how much deflection the parts are under during operation. When I say a thou, I'm talking about a thousandth of an inch. To give you a reference point, a common sheet of paper is three to four thousandths of an inch. So we're talking about something that's three or four times thinner than a sheet of notebook paper. Now is a good time to become comfortable with the relationship between millimeters and inches. The conversion ratio is one thousandth of an inch is 0.025 millimeters, ten thousandths of an inch is 0.25 millimeters, and twenty thousandths of an inch is 0.5 millimeters. The most common bearing sizes are standard HX, 0 0.025, 0 0.25, and 0.5. These measurements are found in the part numbers and their units are millimeters. If you're used to dealing with an OEM bearing matrix where you have a colored or a numbered bearing, it's important that you understand that a standard bearing falls mid-limit in the range. So if you look at your colored or numbered bearing chart, if you find the bearing color or number that fits in the middle of the size range, that's what you're getting when you buy a standard bearing. An HX bearing is 1,000th of an inch thinner or 0.025 millimeters thinner than a standard bearing offering you more oil clearance. There's also a bearing that is 1,000th thicker, so it's a 0.025 or 0.026 depending on the manufacturer. This will offer you less bearing clearance than a standard bearing. The next bearing sizes are when you've had the crank machined. So you can have a 0.25 millimeter or 10 thousandths over size bearing or a 0.5 millimeter or 20 thousandths over size bearing. So this bearing is thicker, making up for the material that's been removed off the crankshaft. If you're in a scenario where you'd like to adjust the bearing clearance by less than a thousandth, what you'll do is you'll get a H bearing and an HX bearing on the same journal or an H bearing and a 0.025 bearing on the same journal. It's important that you understand that you cannot put a HX bearing on the same journal as a 0.025 bearing. The size change is too great. Hopefully after watching this video, it helps with the ordering process a little bit easier and less confusing for you. And you understand a little bit more about what you're gonna be doing with bearing clearance as you assemble your engine. Thanks and see you next week.